to that, should we hop into our integration discussion? I see we got a twofer here. CAN board initial configuration. I see NextCloud deck. We do. I, I didn't want to slight any of our other services because they they offer boards as well. I mean, it it doesn't seem fair sure. to, yeah. to exclude NextCloud uh, when we're talking about Kanban boards just because it, it's not specifically designed for that use case right off the bat. I mean, it does have a fully fledged application that's actually been been pushed and, and hit 1.0 recently and i think it's it's a really well done implementation and i wanted to give that a full, fair shake as well uh, and then and then go through the the differences between that what i wanted to touch on with camboard was the initial configuration we've had several overview episodes where we've gone over what something is and and how we use it and what we think is most important and and getting a holistic high level view of what that is now it's time at least for camboard to dive into how do we get started using it. We wanted to get the details that would give us the ability to hit the ground running. So I laid out what I think are the most important things, first steps in order to configure a Camboard instance, specifically a Camboard project. So this is getting going from scratch. And the first thing I wanted to touch on, again, following up from last week, were the columns and states, right? So I walked through the setup, where to go to get to where the columns are and what you can do with the columns. So the columns, you can change their names, you can delete them, you can edit them, you can add some, and, and, and that's really all you need to do with them. There's not a whole lot of configuration. Obviously, the biggest part of this is the configuration. So it's like, what columns do I even need, right? How do I wanna track this? The basic way to start off with this is to figure out how to configure your, your columns. What columns do you have? So, so I give a couple of different workflows, and I know we touched on some of these as possibilities, but I really wanted to break down how they could work. As we were talking about last episode, the most basic of states are to do, doing, and done. Those are the basic three states, right? That's, that's a fine setup in and of itself. However, adding a couple of states makes the workflow much more flexible and robust. My recommended setup for any general board, if and this fits a lot, a lot of workflows as we'll go over, but, but in general, this is what I would say. Um, we start off with a backlog. Then I have a planned column. These are tasks that have been prioritized and I know I have planned to do these. The next column would be the in progress column, the things that I'm currently doing. From, from there, it becomes a little bit more off in the weeds. So I have, I have the, the, the initial idea phase in the backlog, then I migrate it to something that I know I wanna do in the planned state, and then I bring it to in progress where I'm actually doing it. When I'm actually doing it, there are a couple states it could be in besides me actually sitting down and working on something or, or it waiting for me to sit down and work on it. Uh, it could be waiting in some kind of response from someone else or, or some kind of follow-up that I need to perform. The next column is the review or the testing column. So this is after I've gone back and forth with people and I'm ready to, to review or test this. The second to last column after that is the pending uh, column, the one I like to call the time activated column. I think that sums it up better than anything. These are typically set aside for events where an event would occur on a specific date or at a specific time. If I don't want to see that in my in progress because I, I can't do anything until that time, right? If I have a concert that I'm going to, right? I'm going to throw it in the pending column because that concert is until next Saturday. I can't do anything until next Saturday. And then the last column is the done column. Now, this is the most rewarding column because when stuff gets put into the done column and then you come back the next day, and maybe it wasn't a great morning or maybe you're just like super groggy and you're looking to get some pep. It's great to go back and say, look what I accomplished in the past week. Look what I, look what I did, right? Um, now we, we do a little special something with our done column. We actually have it so that uh, it can board tracks the days a specific task has been in that done column. And once it reaches 20 days, it closes out that task, which hides it from the default view, uh, which is which is perfect because I want that to be around so that I can review it. Uh, when when Jack and I get together for our review meetings, right, we go through everything that's in that done column. We say, all right, what's been there for less than 14 days? And because we, we do review meetings every two weeks and, and we go over that, we, we see what's been done. A couple other uh, configuration options I wanted to go over, um, for instance, for like a CRM or, or a sales pipeline, 
right? If you think of from left to right, you know, as we're setting up these columns, what would be applicable for all of these various scenarios, right? Initial contact or, or like uh, outreach or or a, a brand new lead, a brand new customer, brand new someone, right? Um, and then what what would be different between that and then someone who's who signed on, who's who's behind your project 100%, but is the first time that they're going through the process of, of working with you, of having a relationship with you. And then how is that going to be different from someone who's done this before and, you know, you, who you're trying to maintain a relationship with, right? Are there similarities throughout the process for all three of those states? And I would say yes. And I would say you can track them all uh, in in this kind of general workflow, so you have a you have a backlog, a backlog of sales leads, a backlog of of work to be done, of of you know relationships to be maintained. If I you know make a point of calling someone quarterly, that's gonna be that's gonna be something that I I have in there waiting, ready to go. Then the next column would be our initial contact. You know something's got to kick this off, whether it's a me reaching out to someone, someone. Uh, emailing me, um, whether it's, you know, any one of those, you're going to have that initial contact and, and trying to document or develop, you know, what, what's the need here, right? How, how can I help? You know, what, what's the problem? Where can we fit in? Uh, and then once that's done, uh, there, there could be another column in, in a consultation or, or requirement documentation and, and a kind of general negotiation, tr- trying to feel out, you know, what we can do, how we can help and, and what are the details? How, what do we need to get to, you know, can we get on the same page in this and can I provide something that's going to meet your need, right? Um, if, if we continue past that, then you're on to the development phase. Seeing as this is just a relationship board, I'm just going to call it a development phase. So you're going to develop what you develop how you develop it, maybe use your other board to start developing stuff internally, that's fine. Uh, but as far as your customer's concerned, you're developing something for them. Once leaving that column would would put your task into a, a demo column or, or almost an acceptance testing column where you say, all right, here's what we've uh, come up with, what we're able to provide. Does this meet your needs? Uh, does this need refinement? You know, How can we make this better for you? Is this something you're going to be able to work with and back and forth? And, and I actually foresee, you know, a lot of going back and forth between that development and an acceptance testing column. Second to last, you're going to put it in a delivery column, whether that's um, you needing to deploy it to them or, or deliver it to them and, and, and build them for that and, and kind of finalize all the details of that transaction. Um, or, or even just to follow up and say, hey, you know what, this is, you know, you, you've been with us. A year, right? Let's give you a, a annual discount or something like that, right? So you're gonna you're gonna put that through for them. Once that's done, you get the satisfaction of moving it to the very last column, the close column, and and you can see how that could be applied to all stages of the life cycle, whether it's a brand new customer, someone who you're working with for the first time, or someone who's uh, been established in your ecosystem for a while. And I think that's that's a a, a good concept to use. Obviously, any of these can be tweaked. If you don't need the time activated column, then don't use it, right? If you don't need the development column, if you can go straight from from a customer uh, saying that he wants something to you delivering it, get rid of the development column. That, that's fine. Um, these are these are at the these are at the whim of the people who use them. Obviously, a system is only going to be as good as if you're using it. If it's not conducive to you using it, or if it doesn't make sense for your specific application, then change it. Absolutely, make it make sense for you. So these are once again just examples. I think you covered it pretty well. Uh, the one thing I note it's the difference between uh, review and waiting is external versus internal. Cool. All right. Well, do we want to hop into uh, rows and swim lanes next? Yeah, this this All this right. one's fun. Uh, rows that are colloquially known as swim lanes are used to break up the tasks on the board in one of several ways. There's there's once again no set way to do this. This is entirely up to whatever makes sense for the business. These should be used to indicate priority, with the higher priority towards the top. This is this is purely visual. the The other thing is don't use these to split up tasks by assignee. That's what the assignees and other filters are for. Swim lanes are for stuff that cannot be indicated by that. So the most basic swim lane setup, as we went through before, from top to bottom, would be uh, having the, the, the critical tasks in the top swim lane and then literally everything else in the bottom. Um, and like I said before, this, this allows for us to immediately 
get ourselves in the habit of indicating something being critical and something being not and not having everything be critical all the time. There's a setup that, that Jack and I use that I think has worked out very well uh, that splits it into four swim lanes. Uh, one being critical at the very top, the next one being incidents, the third one maintenance, and the fourth improvements. To define those, anything that's a bug or an issue or a problem, anything that's a one-off solution, right, would go in the incident column. That would be the, the one right below critical, right? The swim lane right below that, the maintenance swim lane, that's a, that's a swim lane that should house all of the repetitive work. Everything else goes into the improvement swim lane. To kind of back off that granular design, there's there's also another way people try to take it, which is you can categorize your swim lanes by visibility. Um, so, you know, to, to wrap Absolutely. that up, and, th and that was a fairly short segment, but to wrap that up, swim lanes are the most efficient way to categorize tasks on a board according to priority or type of object uh, or, or subject, type of subject. But I would caution against using them to indicate things that other aspects of the task are meant to indicate, like categories or due dates. <laughs> so having having gone over Camboard, uh, I, I think that's a that's a good enough initial configuration that'll get you set up with your 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 columns and your rows, right? And and give you a better idea of how to set that up. Now there there might even be room for another episode of how we do categories and tags and assignees and uh, additional actions that Kanban is, is able to perform, but that will get you started. The next thing I wanted to go over was deck. Well, and, and, and this is almost a comparison between the two. I mean, uh, unashamedly a comparison between the two of them. This is a application uh, that can be installed in Nextcloud and it has its complementary mobile app and, and the entire ecosystem behind it. And it works very well with the internals of Nextcloud as well. So DEC, similarly, is a Kanban-style organizational tool aimed at personal planning and project organization for teams. With DEC, you can add your tasks to cards and put them in order. You can write down additional notes in Markdown, obviously a programmer's favorite markup language. You can assign labels for even better organization, similarly to categories or tags. You can share with your team, friends, or family, basically whoever else is on Nextcloud. And I think that's a big thing, right? Especially if you're already using Nextcloud for any of its other integrations. This is something that you can just put right on top of it as well. Uh, you can attach files and embed them in your description. You can discuss with your team using the comment system, uh, which is ultimately important. You, you definitely want to have comments on these these tasks, whether in Camboard or, or in Deck. You can keep track of changes in the activity stream, like it will give you a live feed of exactly who's done what to what when. Uh, and then get your project organized, which is what we're trying to do in the first place. We're trying to organize our projects. And, and that's what DEC allows us to do, very, very similar to, to Camboard. So but I did want to mention what DEC has and even more notably what DEC does not have. DEC has a subset of features that Camboard has. Uh, it has the following features in no particular order. It has titles, assignees, attachments, due dates, tags, descriptions, and comments. That's a great baseline. Now, it does notably lack a couple of the features when compared to Kanboard that Kanboard has, namely automated actions, internal and external links, and subtasks. Um, however, like I sum it up here, for, for the most basic of workflows, it would be more than sufficient. I think the one major benefit is the uh, integration, obviously, with Nextcloud.